Welcome to Evernote 101. In this video, we're going to take a tour of the Evernote client for Mac OS X. We'll be working with a fresh install of Evernote, but I'll import some sample data in a little bit so I can demonstrate some of Evernote's capabilities. You know, Evernote is really good at doing basically four things with your data. Capturing it, storing it, retrieving it, and sharing it. But before we can get into these, we'll need to familiarize ourselves with the Evernote interface. There's a lot to cover, and we're going to move quickly, but that's the beauty of video on demand. You can watch and rewatch whenever you want. Without further ado, let's get started. The general layout of Evernote is clean, simple, and well designed. It has a polished look. By default, the Evernote install on OS X has four main sections the toolbar, which is up here, the sidebar, the filtered notes list, and the note viewer. Let's start by talking about the sidebar. You can see there are a number of sections here, and some of the sections that I'll talk about uh, you can't actually see yet, and we'll get to why that is. At the very top, we have the shortcuts. The shortcuts are like bookmarks in your browser. They can hold a note, a notebook, a stack, or a tag that you want quick and easy access to at all times. The recent notes section is simply a list of the five most recently viewed notes. Of course, what we have highlighted now is the notes pane. And when I click that, it displays all of the notes in one of four main ways, which we'll talk about later. Then we have the notebook section. The notebook section displays all of our notebooks and notebook stacks and sorts them according to the name of the notebook, the number of notes in that notebook or stack, and how recently that notebook or notebook stack has been updated. Then the section that's missing from here is what's called the tags section. The tag section gives a comprehensive list of all of the tags from all of your notes. It also shows the number of times each tag has been used and allows you to organize tags by grouping or nesting them underneath each other. Now this doesn't do anything to how the tags work within the notes themselves, but it is a way to visually organize your tags. The Atlas section displays your notes according to the geographical location embedded within the note. Now, I haven't used this section much because most of my notes don't have any geographical information in them. But if yours did, especially if you use the iOS client or the Android app for Evernote, you would potentially see a lot of information in the Atlas section. And then we have the Evernote trunk. The Evernote trunk is a curated selection of software, hardware, clothing and other products built around the Evernote ecosystem. Everything from how-to books to t-shirts, scanning devices, and apps to improve or add functionality to your Evernote system. Next, let's talk about the toolbar. And that's this area right along the top of the window. Let's start over here at the left and we'll work our way to the right. So the first thing that we see is a back and forwards button. Now these are very similar in function to how the backwards and forwards button work in your browsers. So if I click back, it takes me back to the view that I had most recently. If I click forward, it takes me, again, back through the history of things that I've viewed in Evernote. Next, we have the user drop-down menu. And as you can see, this has a number of different options. We can use this to quickly switch between accounts if we have multiple Evernote accounts. We can use it to add an account or sign out of an account. We can use it to view account info. And as we can see here, it shows us how much of our monthly allowance of uploads we've used, as well as our Evernote email, and a list of the benefits to signing up for a premium Evernote account. And we'll talk more about those a little bit later. Next, we have the refresh button or the sync button. The sync button allows us to manually tell Evernote to sync all of our information with our web-based version of Evernote. Now, you can tell Evernote to sync from five minutes to 60 minutes, or not at all, in which case you'll have to manually sync. But whatever your automatic sync settings are, you can always force a sync by clicking this sync button in the toolbar. We have the activity feed. The activity feed is really only useful if you have shared notebooks. When someone updates a note or a notebook, you'll receive a message in your activity feed with the details. Then we have the new note button. And the new note button is contextual. What that means is, is that if I'm in a particular notebook, let's say I have a notebook for finances, a notebook for business, and a notebook for artwork. If I click new note, it's going to create a new note in the notebook that I'm currently in. 
Now, if I have multiple notebooks, this new note button changes to have a drop down option, and that drop down option will allow me to specify where I want that new note to be created. Then we have the search tool all the way here on the right. Now, the search tool is very, very powerful and probably deserves its own video altogether. But for now, suffice it to say, it works much the same way Google search works. So I can type in a keyword that I think is in the note that I'm looking for, and it will return in the filtered notes section the list of notes that contain that keyword or that have attachments that contain that keyword. Next, let's talk about the filtered notes section. Now, to show off some of Evernote's capabilities in this area, I'm going to go ahead and import some notes I've already created. I'm going to pause the video and I'll be back in just a second. So I've gone ahead and imported the notes and what you'll notice is that there is a very interesting collection of information here. So for example, here's a receipt from Ruby Tuesdays. Here's a picture of my grandpa that appeared in the Saturday Evening Post. Here's an article about an interview with Phil Libin, the CEO of Evernote. All of these things can be seen in the filtered notes section right here. Now, the filtered notes section is simply a list of notes that have been filtered by some criteria. So right now, I only have two notebooks. I have a notebook for my notes and a notebook for the notes that I delete. But let's say, for example, I have a multitude of notebooks. So maybe I have a notebook about vacation spots that I might want to visit. If I look at that notebook, the notes that I'm looking at are filtered because it's only showing me the notes in that notebook. Or maybe I perform a search for only notes that have the word fill in them, in which case the filtered notes section only shows me notes that contain that keyword, in this case, the article about Phil Libin. Now, there are a number of ways that I can sort and organize the notes that I'm viewing within the filtered notes list. And the easiest way to do this is to use the little drop down box right here. As you can see, it gives me four different views and also a list of ways that I can sort these notes. So for example, I can sort by the title of the note and it'll sort it alphabetically. I can also sort by the date that note was created or the date that it was updated, in which case these two options here become very relevant. So if I sort by the date that the notes were created, and then I can also sort by newest to oldest, it will show me the notes that I've created most recently with the newest at the top and the oldest at the bottom. Or I can reverse that sort so that it shows the oldest at the top and the newest down here at the bottom. I can also sort these notes by a number of other criteria. For example, I can sort by the source URL. So for example, this note about Phil Libin, you can see that it has lifehacker.com. And if I click on the information, it gives me the URL for that specific article. So I can sort my notes by the source URL. I can also sort the notes by the size of the note. Currently with Evernote, if you have a non-premium account, the maximum size note that you can have is a good bit smaller than if you pay for a premium account. And if I want to, I can go ahead and sort my notes according to size, like this. Now there are other ways that you can sort notes according to size. In particular, this is useful if a note has attachments like images, audio, or video files, which would obviously make the size of the note much bigger. So you can sort by size to find notes that have large attachments but you can also use the search functionality to search for notes that have attachments. You can also group the notes. So for example, right now you see my notes are grouped by month. So we have October 2012, November 2012, December 2012, and so on. And this grouping works for notes that we are browsing for or notes that we have searched for. And the way that we can turn that on and off is by simply checking these options right here. So if we go back, you can see that now my notes will be grouped whether or not I'm browsing or whether or not I have searched for those notes. There's also a number of ways that I can display these notes. So right now we're looking at the card view right here. There's also the expanded card view. There's also the snippet view. This is one of my favorites right here. And then there's also the list view, which uh, may look to many of you very similar to some email clients. Now there's something unique about the expanded card view. So in all the other views you see the list of notes along with the content of the highlighted note alongside of it in some way. But in the expanded card view all you see is a list of the notes. 
So for example, if I go here to the snippet view and I click on this software development workflow note, I can see the contents of the note alongside a list of the notes. But if I select the expanded card view and I highlight that software development workflow note, it just highlights it. I don't see the content. Now if I double click on it, it will go ahead and open that note in another window. But that's something that's unique about that view. So let me go back to the snippet view to wrap this up. And I'm going to go ahead and change the sort to newest to oldest because I want my most recent information at the top. Now let's take a look at the note viewer itself. And again, we'll work our way from the left to the right in the note viewer toolbar. First, we have the notebook drop down. What this allows us to do is it allows us to select a notebook that we want this particular note to be filed away in. So for example, if I had a notebook about vacations or coffee that I wanted to store this note in, I could select it from this drop down menu right here. And you can see that it has a quick filter search function here. So that if I had a multitude of notebooks, I could begin typing in the first few letters of the notebook that I wanted to place this note in, and it would filter the notes that it displayed here according to what I'd searched for. And we also have the tags field. So for example, I might want to tag this note with the word branding. I also might want to tag it with the note graphics. If I don't like the note, I can go ahead and click the little trash can icon here, and it will move that note to the trash notebook, which you can see right here. There's also the sharing button, and it gives me a variety of ways that I can share this to Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. I can email it, or I can copy the URL for this note to my clipboard so that I can paste it into an email or something similar. And there's the note info button. We looked at this a little bit earlier. You can see that we have a lot more detail here, when it was created, when it was last updated, whether or not it's been synced or not, how big it is, who created the note. A lot more of the note metadata can be viewed in the note info. Now, since I haven't clicked on the content of this note, you can see that by default, it shows me the created and updated dates for this note. But if I go ahead and click on the note information, you can see that this toolbar changes to show a number of formatting options. Now we're not going to get into the specifics of these formatting options right now, but suffice to say there are a multitude of them and there are some pretty cool things that we can do with those when we start putting them together. I want to go over some of the preferences and suggested settings for those preferences in Evernote, but before I do let me share with you a quick navigational tip. So let's say that you want to jump to a particular notebook or a particular tag uh, but you don't want to have to go through the hassle of clicking on notebooks over here or clicking on tags here. You want to just be able to use a hotkey sequence. That's very easy. To jump to a particular notebook, simply hit Command J, and you can either select it from the menu right here, or you can start typing. Now if you want to jump to a particular tag, it's very similar, it's just Shift Command J. You can jump to the particular tag that you want by using the up and down arrows like this, or you can use the quick filter search function if you have a lot of tags that you want to search through very quickly. Let's go ahead and take a look at the preferences inside of Evernote, and I'll give you some suggestions for how I have my Evernote account set up. Starting right here in general, we can tell Evernote which notebook we want notes to automatically be placed in. I typically set up a notebook called Inbox, and that's where all my notes go before I've edited them, added tags, and decided where I want to store those more permanently. I also keep these two options checked, and the reason why this is important is if the Evernote helper is running, I can create a new Evernote note from anywhere in my operating system by using the hotkey sequence command Control n Our Evernote sync settings can be found here in the sync pane. As you can see, you can have your account sync every five minutes all the way up to an hour or manually. And manually just means that you'll have to click the sync button up here in the toolbar. You can also see a list of the notebooks that you're currently sharing or are currently being shared with you in Evernote. You'll also want to make sure that this checkbox is selected so that Evernote will warn you if you try to close Evernote while your notes are syncing. This is similar to how a word processor or a spreadsheet or lots of other applications 
will warn you if you try to quit without saving your changes. We have the software update pane. I like to have Evernote check for updates automatically on a daily basis. By default, this option will be unchecked. It'll look like that. Personally, I like having the latest releases of Evernote that the company puts out. So I'm going to go ahead and check this box. And it gives me a warning saying, oh, you know, we don't provide technical support for this. That's true. I've only ever had really one problem with a beta release, so it doesn't bother me to go ahead and use those. We have the clipping pane. If you don't have the Evernote Web Clipper installed, as well as the Evernote Clearly Browser extension installed, you'll want to go ahead and get those installed right away. They are fantastic for grabbing information from the web and bringing it into Evernote. The other important option here is how you want Evernote to treat PDFs. So if I copy a PDF from my desktop, or if I clip one from the web, this option is going to tell Evernote how to display that PDF inside of the note itself. So there are two options, inline and as attachments. Now I go back and forth between these two and there are some good things about both of them. So if it's a book, like let's say the Lifehacker Manifesto, I might want that to display inline because that's going to be the only thing in my note. But if I have a note with a table and a list of attachments, I'm probably going to want those to display as attachments rather than inline. Otherwise, the table dimensions and the formatting is going to get really kind of messed up. Here we have the shortcuts pane. Now, to be blunt, I haven't found these options to be overly helpful. And the reason is, I have a lot of programs installed on my laptop. And because of that, a number of these hockey sequences are already in use by other programs. I found that I, I can get along fine without them, so I just don't worry about it. And then we have the formatting section. This is where we can set the type of font that we want, size of font, the format for dates that we're going to put into our notes, as well as the option to simplify the formatting for content that we paste into Evernote. All these options are a matter of taste, so I'm really not going to spend any time here. And that's it. In Evernote 201, we'll look at how to get our information into Evernote, how to organize it, how to retrieve it, and how to share it. Thanks for watching.